a very good morning to all uh, i'll be talking about setting up how to set up a rop practice uh, these will be the topics which i'll be covering uh, setting up rop practice is uh, not for everybody it's a person who has a particular interest in doing rop only uh, beneficial for them so i will be uh, covering uh, for the training part equipment tie ups documentation indemnity required if you are doing rop and how rop has helped me in my private practice and message uh, so before starting rop a good training is very much important we cannot touch a baby with rop or do rop screening if we don't have a proper training there are many good institutes in our country where we can ha have rop training and if possible to have hands on laser on them and if possible a uh, few intravitreal injections also in rop it can be uh, 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 possible at these training institutes in the starting if we are starting rop at least to start with medical rop uh, to start with lasers and anti vegfs uh, surgery i am not doing and it's also important to attend regular webinars rop cmes and rop conferences to keep oneself updated with what is going on in rop we get to learn so many things and also if we are planning to start a rop practice uh, it is better to become a member of a rop society uh, there's a whatsapp group in which there a lot of queries are there and we get to learn so many things from those queries uh, proper equipment is also required before we start doing rop practice indirect ophthalmoscope as uh, it's a vr practice most of us already have a indirect ophthalmoscope uh, we can use 20 diopter lens 28 diopter lens speculum indenter or a wire vitis green laser many people have green laser but when i started my pri private practice i along with the green laser i purchased lio at that very time because i was clear that i have to do rop practice so whenever we are buying a green laser uh, we have to keep that in mind as nagesh was telling many uh, laser machines are not po portable so uh, we have to think about it before buying green laser and i have a dedicated staff who handles my green laser and lio attachments for it uh, so this is how uh, the rop equipment looks like this is a speculum wire vectis uh, anybody who's comfortable with 20 uh, diopter lens or a 28 diopter lens and the drops the uh, anesthetic drops lubricatings and uh, dilating rop semi drops and this is my rop bag uh, with the indirect ophthalmoscope the sterilized equipment 28 lens eye drops uh, spare battery it's a battery operated not a wire operated spare battery is there uh, my uh, uh, different color pencils and my rop file for documentations uh, this is a small video uh, i have a dedicated staff uh, who's arranging my uh, uh, this laser console he carefully uh, puts everything in that because this is the main part anything breakage it will cost very heavily uh, to the doctor this is how the laser is packed it's uh, mid size bag this is very important for a lio cable it has a fiber optic and uh, handling it is very important no uh, sharp bends are given in the handling of the lio cable and this is my indirect ophthalmoscope bag and he's the same person who uh, whenever i'm doing rop the, this is my uh, equipment for the rop laser and this is the same person who wherever i go to the nico he is the person who installs the laser for me he is the only person who's handling my laser Uh, so a uh, little about intravital how i gave intravital injections in rop uh, normally we wrap a baby nicely because uh, the vrot can be really very cold it is very important to wrap the baby nicely and keep the baby warm because these babies uh, go for hypothermia little forward
these are the things required uh, for giving intravital injections a uh, single adult drape which uh, drape which we are using feco can be fixed on both the eyes together some paracin eye drops this is the dose 0.02 ml of uh, i usually use avastin it is stabilized with the bud and the tip is aiming towards the optic nerve and my assistant uh, is pressing the plunger to give the injection uh, to inject the dose and a few drops of beta adenine are put similarly it is repeated on the other side we change the gloves both the assistant and the surgeon the injection is given and always examine the baby next day post the injection uh, uh it is very important when we are starting rop practice uh, we should tie up with various nicus around the city we should know which are the level 3 nicus are available and we should just go and meet them the pediatricians and the neonatologists and uh, explore the options of doing rop practice in their hospital i usually don't tell them to uh, send send the babies send the babies to me i just go to their nicus and examine the babies and we have to build a good rapport with all the neonatologists and the pediatricians uh, many government hospitals they don't have rop specialists so they also come up with various schemes and they sometimes outsource rop specialist uh, specialist and also we can organize various cmes uh, the big hospitals or the corporates they have a boardroom so we can always arrange small cmes in there so that they know that you are doing a lot of rop Uh, this is one of the most important thing, like having proper documentation and record keeping. And this RBSK booklet, which I'll be showing next, is very important. One should go uh, in detail with that book. There is a ROP screening form is also available. One can uh, just take a print out and modify according to uh, his needs. And before doing ROP practice, uh, we should be ready with all these consent forms for screening, for laser, for anti-VEGF injections. These can be uh, downloaded from AIUS or uh, DOS consents. Uh, this is the RBSK booklet, uh, which shows the universal eye screening, and it covers ROP also. This is the ROP form recording form, which is there. It has a follow-up form also, and this can be modified according to yourself. And uh, this is the DOS consents, which shows the ROP laser and anti-VEGF consent form. uh this is another important point medical indemnity if you are doing rop uh, you should have a indemnity i personally have of 20 lakhs because i don't operate rop cases but uh, uh, senior suggest like if you are operating also uh, uh, minimal uh, minimum uh, indemnity should be of a 2 bhk apartment in your area uh, of practicing and uh, how rop has helped me in growing my private practice like i Uh, when i'm visiting so many nikus i get to meet so many doctors staff uh, it builds up a networking over there and uh, once rop babies are discharged from the nikus then they for subsequent follow ups they can send to me and not only for rop they can send other babies or other eye related problems for refractive errors cataracts also to me uh, during follow ups so the take home message is uh, when in doubt for rop don't hesitate to refer to higher center or take a second opinion and counseling is very important for screening as well as treatment spend some time with the parents for counseling and uh, uh, keep updated with rop literature what is the latest treatment going on for rop and latest nomenclature what is there it's recently come out and if possible uh, draw diagrams or take photographs we can take a photograph with the mobile there are so many portable cameras which are available uh, it's always beneficial to have them